you for joining us today. We are pleased to announce a new tool called SimSip Discovery for discovery and translational scientists. An intuitive PBPK software for small molecule drug discovery and development. SimSip Discovery is derived from the gold standard SimSip simulator. It is used to deliver confidence in decision making during the pre-IND and translational drug development stages. Diving in deeper to the applications, beginning in the discovery and lead identification and optimization, SimSip Discovery can guide decisions regarding the optimal lab objectives for a chemical series. It also supports high throughput screening for rapid batch processing of results to triage the best drug candidates. As we progress towards compound selection, the software delivers early PK, PD, and most important, a mechanistic first in human PK prediction. SimSip Discovery also includes a static DDI calculator that flags victim and perpetrator DDI liability against regulatory guidelines from the FDA, EMA and PMDA. SimSip is increasingly being used for formulation development, so we included some of these capabilities to strengthen work in early formulation screening. Additionally, SimSip discovery enables the prediction of exposure in TOC studies. In order to demonstrate the main features of SimSip discovery, I will walk you through how to do a simple first in human PK prediction. We start off by performing a PK prediction in preclinical species. This allows us to build confidence that the assumptions of a model are valid before moving forward to the human prediction. We have preclinical PBPK models available in mouse, rat, dog and monkey. We can use compound specific FISCHEM data and in vitro data relevant to the species of interest as input into the model. The model prediction is compared to the observed data in preclinical species. Providing the prediction is reasonably accurate, we move forward to the human prediction. If there are mismatches between the predicted and observed PK data in preclinical species, it indicates that there may be discrepancies in some of the assumptions of the model and further experiments may be required to understand this more. It is a learn and confirm cycle. Finally, for the human PK prediction, the same FISCHEM data are used together with human specific in vitro data, this time in the human PBPK model. Plasma and tissue concentration time profiles after IV and oral administration under single or multiple dose conditions can then be simulated. Moving to the case study, compound X is a lipophilic neutral compound with high plasma protein binding across species. Blood to plasma ratio is assumed to be one. It is cleared via SIP metabolism and microsomal intrinsic clearance values are available across species. Microsomal binding data is also available. Solubility is reasonable given the log P, and permeability data is not available, so it's been predicted based on FISCHEM data. Preclinical IV and oral data are available in rat and dog, and the rat IV and the rat oral PK is shown on the slide. Moving to the simulator, we have PBPK models available in mouse, rat, dog, monkey and human. Starting with the rat model as an example, we have some basic demographic information. 
For the liver and the GI tract, we have systems parameters including hepatocellularity and gastric emptying time and many more. We then have information on the volume and composition of the different tissues in the PBPK model. These are used to help predict distribution properties. We also have the blood flow for each of the tissues. And then finally, we have a specific model for the brain. Moving to the compound file and starting with the PhysChem and blood binding tab. We input the basic properties for the molecule, molecular weight, log P, and charge. This compound has a molecular weight of 500, a log P of 3.4, and is neutral. Using this calculator, we can estimate log P from log D and pKa using the henderson hasselpack assumptions. We can then input the measured FU in plasma and also the blood to plasma ratios. These parameters can also be predicted using the calculators here. As we are working here on a rat PK simulation, these values are specific for the rat. I will skip the absorption tab as we are starting off with an IV simulation. Moving to the distribution tab, we have a number of model options, the minimal PBPK model, the full PBPK model, and a compartmental model, which includes one, two, and three compartmental PK models. For this case, we are going to use the full PBPK model. As you can see, the model has predicted a VSS value of 0.75 litres per kilo and tissue to plasma partition coefficients, or what we call KP values, for each of the tissues within the PBPK model. These values help define how the drug distributes in the body, the shape of the PK plasma concentration time profile, and ultimately the volume of distribution value. We have three different methods um, for predicting the KP values, methods one to three, which correspond to different equations from the literature. These equations use PhysChem and in vitro binding data, together with tissue composition, for example, the water, lipid and protein content of each tissue across each species to predict distribution. Moving to the elimination tab, we have a number of different ways to input the clearance parameters for the compound. In this case, we use the rat liver microsome data and microsomal binding data directly into the model. However, we can also input an observed IV clearance or use, a date, or use data from other in vitro systems. We also have other tabs for transporters and PD models, but I will not cover these today. Moving to the trial design tab, we initially determine whether we want to run a species representative or a population. We select the start and end time of the simulation, the dose and the dosing route, whether we want to simulate fasted or fed conditions or single or multiple doses. In the outputs tab, we select what we want to output. And we can also include the observed data for comparison. We then click um, the green arrow to run the simulation. The results are output into Excel. On the first page of the outputs, we have a summary of the compound parameters and the results. Now to the key results. Here you can see the predicted IV plasma concentration time profiles for this compound with time on the x-axis and concentration on the y-axis. On another sheet, you can see the predicted PK parameters. 
Overall, the simulated IV concentrations and PK parameters compare well to the observed data, providing confidence in the input data and model assumptions. Moving on to the OR profile, we can copy this workspace and update the dosing route to oral. This allows us to enter absorption related parameters into the model. We have two model options available. The first order model where FA and KA can be directly inputted or predicted from in vitro data. Alternatively, we can use the ADAM or advanced dissolution, absorption and metabolism model. This is a transit model where the gut is split up into a number of different regions, for example, the duodenum, ileum and colon. The model predicts how the drug will go in and out of solution as it transits through the gastrointestinal tract and as a function of systems parameters like transit times and pH, as well as compound specific data like pKa and solubility. In this case, we do not have permeability data available. So we predict this value in the model using compound specific PhysChem data. Here the permeability is predicted to be high. We then move to the formulation tab to input the formulation type and solubility. The compound is administered as a suspension. Other formulation types are also available, including controlled release. The solubility value of 0.2 mg per mil is inputted. The model will also accept solubility pH profiles and you can account for an increase in solubility due to bile-micelle partitioning. The particle size and other parameters are left at the default values. Then as before, we can run the simulation and compare to the observed data. Again, the predictive PK profiles and parameters compare well to the observed data building confidence in the absorption properties of the model. Now we can move on to the human part of the simulation. We can copy the workspace, update the population to human healthy volunteers, and update the human specific input data. For example, fraction unbounding plasma, blood to plasma ratio, and clearance. We then move to the trial design page, update this as required and run the simulation. This simulation can be repeated at different dose levels and frequencies to determine the required dose to achieve the desired concentration. Again, the predicted plasma concentration time profiles and PK parameters are output into Excel. We can also perform a number of different sensitivity analyses using the automated sensitivity analysis tool. For example, we can explore the effect of dose on fraction absorbed to understand when absorption may become rate limiting. Looking at the results in this particular case, absorption is expected not to be limited by dose. In a situation where we have less than optimal absorption, we can perform sensitivity analyses to determine what we need to do to improve the formulation. For example, increase solubility using an SDD formulation or reduce particle size via micronization. Finally, I would like to show you the static DDI calculator, which is included in this tool. We have the basic and mechanistic static models from the regulators. We can explore DDI risks from a perpetrator and also a victim perspective. Here I add the clinical dose, the molecular weight, the fraction unbound in plasma, the Cmax of interest and the Ki of interest. Fraction unbound in microsomes is also included and the model calculates an unbound Ki value. I then click predict. 
In this particular case, the R1 value is below the thresholds, but the R1 gut value is above the thresholds. Now back to the slides. This slide summarizes the steps we have just taken. We first validated the PBPK modeling approach in RAD. We then simulated the human PK. Here I show the predictions over a dose range. Finally, we did some static DDI calculations and I have provided a typical summary here. To review, SimSIP Discovery is a new PBPK simulator from SimSIP for discovery and translational scientists. First in human dose prediction, compound triage and pipeline optimization, drug-drug interaction screening, and early formulation among its many applications and benefits. Thank you very much for your time.